When looking at shipwrecks, you find two extremes. Wrecks that have a lot of coverage and a lot of material to look over. Furutaka, last weekend, was one such example. Between posted photos and videos, there was plenty to cover on that cruiser. On the other extreme, you have wrecks that were surveyed and had some pictures taken, but not much beyond that. Shimikaze, a rather well-known destroyer, is an example of the latter. I brought her wreck up in passing when covering Furutaka. Something along the lines of, good thing this ship has so much material, because Shimikaze doesn't. That was not a lie. While surveyed back in 2017, still relatively recently, Shimikaze has very little release material. I will cover that material in as much detail as I can, but this will remain a fairly short video by shipwreck standards, albeit one I expect to get decent attention, simply because Shimikaze is a popular ship, both because of World of Warships memes, and because, well, things that have little to do with the ship herself. That aside, as always, a brief background on the sinking before we get into the wreck. That story, as is often the case with these shipwreck videos, revolves around the liberation of the Philippines. Shimikaze had been part of the Japanese force sent to the Battle of Leyte Gulf, specifically the center force where she would pick up survivors from both Musashi and the cruiser Maya. In the case of the survivors from Maya, they had been aboard Musashi, so those men were rescued from the water twice over. This was a good thing for those survivors, but less so for Shimikaze. The destroyer was so overloaded with these extra men that she couldn't really fight in the battle off Samar on October 25th, 1944. Shimikaze remained at the rear of the Japanese formation and mostly missed the battle. The destroyer had no chance to use her massive torpedo broadside as a result. The closest the ship came to actual combat was minor air attack, which mostly amounted to strafing runs as well as a collision with the destroyer Akishimo. This damage was so minor that the ship was almost immediately back in action, although that wouldn't last long. On November 4th, 1944, Shimikaze was assigned to escort a convoy from Manila to Ormok. This would be her final mission, because the destroyer sailed right into the Battle of Ormok Bay, a long-running conflict that chewed up both sides. Multiple American destroyers were sunk, including USS Ward, in this area. The Japanese would also lose several destroyers, Shimikaze among them. That came on November 11th, when Shimikaze was attacked from the air. The destroyer was damaged early on, drifting out of control and on fire. Those fires were also out of control, and would, eventually, lead to the end of Shimikaze. After drifting for several hours, the fires reached something explosive presumably the magazines for her main battery, unless the crew was unable to jettison the torpedoes. Either way, the destroyer blew apart in a massive explosion. She quickly sank, taking most of her crew down with her. Only 131 men were plucked from the water, but those were mixed in with crewmen from another destroyer. Between that and Japanese records being what they are, exactly how many of Shimikaze's crew survived is something of an open question. The other ship, for the record, was the Akizuki-class destroyer Wakatsuki. That wreck was also found, and there are more pictures of her as well. So I'll cover that one in the future. For now, Shimikaze. After her sinking, the ship largely fell out of public attention. It was only relatively recently, with World of Warships and other games, that the ship gained a following, outside of really niche historical interest anyway. It's probably fitting that the wreck was found soon after that uptick in attention began. Shimikaze's Hulk was located by our old friends on RV Petrol on December 1st, 2017, at a depth of 218 meters or 715 feet beneath the surface. The wreck they located was in pretty terrible shape. The explosion that sank Shimikaze did a number on the destroyer, and there's very little recognizable from the hull. Most of the parts that can be recognized are the weaponry. It was the torpedo tubes, in particular, that identified the twisted debris as Shimikaze. Being as the weaponry is the part that can be identified, I'll begin with that. Let's start with this picture of one of the destroyer's main battery turrets. 
or what's left of it anyway. As you can probably see, most of the turret is gone. The top is missing, and much of the thin armor plate is gone with it. Only really the framework and the barrels themselves are left. Shimikaze carried three of these turrets, equipped with the traditional 12.7 centimeter or 5 inch gun that most Japanese destroyers used. There's apparently a commonly cited source that says one of these was removed in a 1944 refit. I'm not sure what source that actually is, which makes me dubious of commonly cited claims. Combined fleet and style make no mention of this, with good reason as well, because pictures of the ship make it clear she entered service with three turrets and went down with three turrets. In fact, the only pictures we have of the ship are of her sea trials and her sinking. Regardless, on the bottom today, those turrets are rough. They're all pretty much destroyed, with sea life growing all over them. Here, in this picture, we have the aft pair. While the first turret on the bow was upright, these two are inverted. I'm not sure, from what we can see here, if they're still on the ship or if they fell off. It's just too dark in the background to be sure. Either way, these are actually in slightly better shape than the bow one. And so far as more of the armor in frame has actually survived the years underwater. Although it looks like a barrel, marked with an arrow here, fell out of one of the turrets. Interestingly, while it's not the focus of the image, you can actually see inside one of the turrets. Not by much, but the armor is gone and the interior is exposed. With not much else to say about this, however, the next thing to look at are the torpedo tubes. Here we have the front of one of those mounts, with the rest completely buried in mud. However, enough is exposed to make identifying the wreck possible. While one of the tubes is pretty heavily damaged, there are still five identifiable tubes here. Shimikaze carried three quintuple torpedo mounts. Finding a wreck with those distinctive mounts made it obvious this was Shimikaze, the only Japanese destroyer to use them. Another mount shown here was also photographed during the dive. This one is less covered, so it's even more apparent that it's a quintuple mount. This is also the first real glimpse we get of the destroyer's hull, such as it is. There's not a lot of detail to make out, other than the fact the hull is on its side. You can tell that because of the orientation of the torpedo tubes, which were deck-mounted. Beyond that, there's some rusted metal, and maybe some surviving deck planks. It's hard to be sure from this one picture. So, let's move on to the final picture of a torpedo mount. This one is presumably the same one, but viewed from further back. Here we can see some of the actual equipment that allowed the use of the torpedoes. Valves that are exposed beneath the rusted mess of metal. There also seems to be wiring draped across the mount, which I'll put an arrow towards. Much as the other pictures, however, a lot of the detail is lost to time. Past the wires and valves, everything is pretty well covered, by either debris or silt. And the deck next to it is little better. There's a hole to the side, which might be battle damage. It could also just be the passage of time, rusting away the decking. Without a better look, I can't be 100% certain. The sad thing is, this is the better looking part of the hull. The two pictures that Petrol took, focused entirely on the hull, are not pretty. Here we have the port shaft, and what little remains of the stern above it. There's not much there. Basically just the lower framework, with the upper works and deck completely gone. Considering how these stern turrets ended up inverted, I'm guessing this area broke apart while sinking. That is, of course, just a guess. I can't be sure without further pictures or sonar. Regardless, this part of the ship shows the typical, relatively shallow wreck signs. A lot of sea life growing all over it. Even the propeller or screw is covered in the stuff, which you don't normally see. It also looks like there might be some debris beneath the hull, which I'll put an arrow towards. Not much else to make note of in this picture. So, with one picture left, we've come to the end of the video. Another look at the hull, although exactly where, I don't know. Petrol didn't actually say where this is, 
from what I've found. I don't think it's the stern, but without some sort of indicator, I can't say it isn't. I also can't say it's the bow or amidships area, because there just aren't any features giving that away. Not even the bilge keel. In fact, the only identifiable detail here are the degaussing wires seen here. The orientation of those indicate that the hull is on its side here, which implies it might be near the torpedo tubes from earlier. What this picture does demonstrate, however, is how bad the damage to the ship actually is. This area is shattered, with part of it completely gone. The wires and the hull they're attached to are cut off and the rest of the structure beneath that area just vanishes into the darkness. Shimikaze, from the turrets to the hull, is a broken ship. Whatever the explosion was, it completely destroyed her. In light of that, I can't say I'm surprised there are so few pictures. Seven total, from what I was able to find. Maybe something else will turn up, and I can do a follow-up video. For now, we come to the end of Shimikaze's wreck. It's not a pretty one, but that doesn't mean she isn't worth looking at. To me, at least. Thank you for watching. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoy the content. And I'll see you in the next one.